They call him the Rolling Thunder. High octane. Full throttle. The legendary Saturday Night Heroes. How's it? And uh, welcome back to another episode of Saturday Night Heroes. Today, we are having a conversation with somebody that's fairly good at racing, I would say, and that is Jody van Zummeren. Jody, before we get to you, actually, I just want to say to our sponsors, of which we have none, so if anybody wants to uh, <laughs> sponsor these episodes, please get in contact with us. Who knows? Maybe somebody will contact us before uh, this episode actually airs, and, and they will be sponsors. But yeah. anyway... Um, if you end up liking the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave comments. Uh, leave comments on the Facebook page, the Instagram page, the YouTube page. We really, really always like to hear from our viewers and uh, what they thought. So, that out of the way. Jody, who are you? Well, welcome to the show, first Thank of you. all. And um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name is Jody van Zimmeren. Um, I've, been racing, um, I've been racing since I've been 11 years old. Actually, my first race, I was 10. That's quite young. Yeah. And Jeez. then, um, actually, my second race, I was 11. Okay. So. And what what, what car was it? Was it was it karting or like full-size cars? Actually, uh, actually, I did do karting, but not. I never raced it. I just tested a couple, but I never liked it. Okay. Um, but then we built a, we built a Datsun GX. Um, uh, it was a 1400. And then I, I raced that for like three years. Yeah. That's GX Coupe? Yeah, GX okay. Coupe. Okay. And, and how did you find that car? Was it uh, a nice entry level? It was very nice. I had <laughs> lots of fun with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, that's that's lived also. I'm, I'm surprised. Uh, you, you know, m the more and more people we speak to, uh, the more I hear that uh, you, you know most of these guys and, and girls, for that matter, they start at really young ages. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, um, in karting. But yes. as you said, I mean, yeah. it, it can be anywhere really. Yes. So no, that's that's quite impressive. Yeah. Um, you are from East London, right? Yes. And and born and bred there. That's that's your yes. playground, basically. Yeah. And club wise, do you belong to a multiple uh, multitude of clubs? Um, no, not really. Um, basically, just Victory Raceway um, and also Border. Um, so I, I actually started racing there. It was um, two thousand and seven. Okay. Yeah. So I've been racing there for a long time, but now basically race at Victory Raceway. So is Victory then? Uh, considered your home track yes. for now yeah obviously it can change in the future yeah. as things may change yeah um okay no cool but but you do race at other i mean you travel a lot you I race at travel. other race tracks yeah and what tracks are those um george outser in cape town um fusta bloemfontein kimberley Targa, targerberg and kimberley i don't know what's yeah what's what's, what's happening, happening there. there but yeah i've raced on a few. So, so you do a lot of traveling yeah and lot. Of course, you know, you're not necessarily flying to these places. You've got to hook travel. your car <laughs> yeah. onto a trailer and, yeah. and travel, yes. which is something I want to pick up on later. Um, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at, um, at how nice Jody's car is and, how, for, well, from my view, how convenient his setup was. But we'll, we'll pick up on that later on. Okay. Um, so you grew up in East London and so did I, actually. Okay. <laughs> I was born and, born and bred there, but now I you know, live in Port Elizabeth. Okay. Um, and... I mean, I haven't really been into race. I have, but I haven't. I mean, I okay. haven't really taken part in racing and, and yeah. done that thing. I've done the odd track day and um, the odd drag race. You know, every. You know, I mean, obviously legit stuff. Not yeah. not talking about street racing yes. um, on on properly sanctioned events. Uh, but many years ago, and and like your name was something that I've always heard around okay. the the Van Zumeren and specifically Jody. Okay. But I believe that your father's Martin. Yes. And did your brother Wade? Also race was also they they both involved in motorsport. Yeah, um, they both involved in motorsport. Um, Wade Wade's name is big in drifting. Okay. Yes. My dad's name was big in the rallying in the eighties and that. And what did he rally? Um, he rallied ma mainly in Nissans. So, I think, on the South African circuit. Yes, yeah, South African circuit. So he raced in Cape Town, a pineapple rally all over the place. Nice. And and with, I mean. I'm assuming he was fairly good at what he does. Yeah, he, he was did. very good, yeah. Okay. And, he, and any specific achievements that you can um, remember? Nothing that I can remember because that was before I was born. Oh, um, oh well. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. that, that makes um, a bit of sense. But uh, I've heard a lot of people tell me if he stayed in Joburg and um, 
he would have had a work drive in Nissan. Yeah, and yeah, and, and um, Nissan did like him. Okay. So. Oh, nice. And so then yeah. um, your brother Wade, so so he's more into the drifting side. Yes. I take it he does fairly well as well. He was. He, he's very good with that. Um, he was a three-time um, South African champion with that. So nice. and, and is that still like something that's very much alive or is it kind of taken a back seat now? It's taken a back seat now. He stopped for a few years, but I think he's gonna he's gonna go back Pick to that up. now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, no, well I mean that that's pretty awesome. Now you know, branching off from their achievements, I believe that you've got a few achievements under your belt. Yes. Um I, I made some notes here, by the way. Okay. <laughs> um, you said in twenty sixteen you were SA number two. Yes. But I believe that's not the best yeah. position that you've held. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that. Um, 2017, I was SA1. Um, in which class? Um, in 2.1s. Okay. Um, that was quite nice. Um, I still remember that, uh, the finals, I, st- I started second. And um, we came around um, to start the race, and Donald Teron, was, he started pole. And I knew in Cape Town, when you come out the last corner, the, you just come out the corner and the flag's over there. Yes. And we came out and the green flag was, was already waving. And I, I just feathered the throttle like that and somehow I pulled in front of him. And was, was that the race? Basically, you stayed and in front the whole yeah, race? Yeah, and when I looked again, I was pulling a gap on them. So, Well, I, as I believe, it's it's um, you, you're prone to making mistakes, especially when you're chasing, yes. like say you're second and you're chasing number one, you've really got to push hard yeah. to get past. But if you're in number one, you're out consistently. You're out consistent. Yeah. So it was quite weird. Uh, I had momentum, so it kept on, but I just didn't want to make a mistake, like you say. Yes. So, yeah, but I think the momentum was everything there. Okay. So and um, and and on that last, which is something which we'll pick up a little bit later, but definitely on that last lap, I take it it's you yeah. also got to be quite consistent. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, I believe you also got Protea Colors 2018. Uh, 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and any other minor achievements or, or not necessarily recognized achievements you want to chat about um okay my first year in 2007 i won the championship in juniors okay. um 2008 i was leading most of the year until the end of the year um, um my car broke for the last two races and i just and i finished second but then the next year i couldn't race in that class because um, i had finished in the top three for two years so oh, I went. So I went to sixteen sixties. Is that something that, that happens? Where if you if you win too many times in a class, they say, "Well, um, ha- I don't think it's back. like that with the big classes, because um, there's some others that um, are champions in sixteen sixties for many years, okay, sure, or whatever class it is." But so you say you went into the next class, yeah, yeah. But that w- but that was just in East London. I don't know if okay. it's I don't know if it's like that by other clubs, but sure. that's how it was then. Okay. Um, and I think also I was getting a lot older, so there was um, younger guys wanting to race there. Yes, okay. So then I rode, then I went to 1660s in um, 2009, okay. and I rode there for about a year. And that um, 1660s class, okay, a couple of years, it's a couple of years back, but yeah. at the moment it's actually a very competitive class. Very competitive class. That I, re, I still remember that year. I was I was still a, a very young. And I remember Brent Barnard came and raced there the one time. And it was only like my third time in 1660s. And he, I think he was SA2 then. Yes. Or one of the, uh, like SA3 or something. Yes, and he, he was very quick then. I still remember he came flying past us on the outside. So you really got so, some hard chasing, yeah. Yeah. And from so. that 1660s, is that when you moved into the 2.1s or did you race other classes? Um, I stayed in 1660s for that year. Okay. In 2010, I went to 2.1s. Um, I, I bought a car from Sean Collins. Yes. Um, it was a Ford Fiesta then, okay. uh, Opel motor. Um, I raced that car for two years, 2010, 2011. I sold that car to um, Lee DeVette in Cape Town. Okay. Um, and then I went to the tar circuit um, from 2012 for the R32 Scala. So tar circuit, you mean like circuit racing? In circuit other words, racing, just, yeah. Okay. So I basically just raced in East London for, okay. for that okay. year. Is that, so that was an R. So I was doing a bit of research on you, and okay. I, I, was, I thought it was like a 33 or 32. Not too familiar with yeah. that. So you said it was an R32. R32, yeah. Okay. And how, I mean, that, that circuit racing is quite a lot different to the yes. stock car racing, yeah. right? Yeah, so I basically raced that for the for that year. Okay. But then at the end of the year, for those two, for the last two races of the year, I went to West Bank V8s. And then I rode a, um, a Corvette, a Chevy Corvette. Wow. So, so the the V8, I mean, that's like the, the pinnacle. Yes. Well, depending on where you're coming from, but I mean, that's generally yeah. seen as the pinnacle of the racing pinnacle. Is, is the V8. Yeah. Yes. How was that to race? That was very nice. Um, I mean, lots of power, right? Lots of power. I've 
since I was small, that's always something I dreamt of racing. But I was very young. I was, I was like 16 then. And you're racing a V8. And I was racing those V8s with those guys. So it was very difficult to keep up to them. But 2013 was a lot better. I understood the car a bit. Okay. Um, I think I finished fifth in the championship in 2013. At such a young age. Yeah. yeah and then, the, but they had the, v, the VSPs with us. The class was dying out. Okay. So they put the VSPs. So it was very difficult to race um, with the V8s and with those guys. Sure. Because the, the speed differential and the way yeah, they and the work. guys kind of hold you up, and when you've got to take yes. them in corners, and it, yeah. it puts you off. I Put, suppose, and yeah. they're also uh, they're very low to the ground, so we uh, were high up. So um, sometimes they next to us, and you can't see them. So right. it's very it's very easy to take them out. To yeah. Take them out. I've taken a few out. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. so after the that that circuit racing in the V8 and the Corvette, where to from there? What what happened? I raced for 2013 and 14, but then. I, got very expensive okay. so we sold that car and then I, I came back to oval racing oh nice okay in 2015 actually in 2014 i rode a bit in east london yes but, but then but it, properly back into it in 15 15 okay. yeah and then, that's been for the last five years yes been, that's your spot that's where i focused on okay. and the class did you move you moved back into the 2.1 modified class 2014 i rode in the hot rods okay i've actually done a f did a few hot rod um, races before that also, um, but went to hot rods and then 2.1s um, the next year. I bought a car from Enrico's Porter, uh, that Ford Fiesta. At, which is what you're currently racing now. Well, yeah. well, well, well the shape is what yeah. you're racing. Yeah. But that's actually my spare car now. Um, that's the one I'm racing tonight. Okay. But then the one that you've been seeing, that's a Opel Corsa. Oh, uh, sure, yes. Okay. Um, For the last few races. And that's a, that, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it, well, let's have a look at it quickly. Um, we might as well since we're here, you yeah. know. Let's let's see. That's this one here, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and what I wanted to comment on specifically, I'm sure a lot of people have noticed this, but okay. your car is really, really neat. I mean, there are some, um, let's say, rough and ready stock cars. Yeah. Yours is definitely not one of those. Yeah. You know what I mean? This almost looks like a, uh, like a, not not a show car, but it's almost there. Yes. You know what I mean? Very clean, very neat. Um, we should have. I think it'll come up. Yeah, a bit but late in the video, but tell us a little bit about that. What does it take to keep that car in such good condition? Um, it is difficult, but I I like to maintain my car. So I, I think with racing, maintenance is everything okay. um, because I don't like something breaking on the car. So yes, yes. I like to try and maintain everything that like I can. Like preventative maintenance almost. Yes, yeah. Okay. And keeping it clean, I mean, uh, it's obviously dirt tracks that, yeah. that we race on and it gets muddy. Yes. Uh, I mean, you, you wash that thing, not after every race, but after every meeting, every everything meeting. gets... Yeah, completely clean. Yes. And who helps you with that? Um, I've got a um, Torbile, another guy that helps me at work. Okay. Um, so uh, what we do is when you get back home, he washes a car with a um, with a pressure cleaner. Oh, sure. Like okay. a steam cleaner. Yes, yes. So I think that helps a lot also. Because you battle with the hose to get all the mud in. Yeah, it, gets, it like cakes up and gets yes. really hard. Eh? Yeah. Um, yeah, so there is... Uh, that was, you know, your impressively clean-looking car. Now, of course, you're not the only one that's got these clean-looking cars. Yeah. There are quite a lot of people yes. that have them. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, as as you've said, and, you know, as, as I think most of us always wonder how much work goes into these cars, um, do you have a pit team that normally works with you or, or are you of the sort of uh, school where you make sure everything is prepared and so you only really need one person? Um, with the maintenance side, it's only me that I maintain the car. But by the racing, there's a lot of people that help me. Um, there's um, Vivian that drives a sprinter, Roland. He's always making, putting fuel in after each heat. Okay. All of that stuff. So so, so they're helping you so that you can concentrate and focus on, on racing. driving and racing. Yeah. yeah. Tell you, it's very interesting, um, especially I would imagine when you are competing uh, higher up in the, in the class. So like yeah. you said, from 2015, you've, and on, I mean, it's not 2020. Yeah. Um, you've been in this like, 2.1 modifieds class. Yeah. And is that kind of where you want to stay or do you want to move into other classes? I would like to move up. The goal was always to go to hot rods, but I think at the moment um, I've see, got a lot of interest in late models. Yes. Okay. So maybe, maybe late models in the future. Yes. And but I mean, th those are, yeah, they are powerful VAs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, where around South Africa specifically, I mean, you can't race late models in East London or not really in PE. There's yeah. nobody that races. So are you going to then start traveling around some more? Probably going to have to. Um, it was mainly Cape Town. There was a lot of late models there. Normally yes, about like I seven, so. eight around there. Um, 
Bloom, I think there's five there now. Okay. Elton had one. Yes, um, yeah, I, I believe he yeah, did, yeah. Yes. But I mean, it's pointless. Like yes. you coming here with your late model Elton, yeah, yeah. and there's just one of you and what you race with yourself. But, that, but that's a thing at the moment. So yeah. that would be the goal um, in the next few years. But like you say, for now it's a bit difficult. Yes. Well, I actually, uh, I want to say race with you, race by yourself. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have noticed, um, especially in some of the footage that we've all seen, when you are in front. I mean, there's actually it's pointless putting a GoPro in your car because. Uh, if you if you're not in front, like within the first lap or something, you're normally in front, and that's where you stay. And then all we just see is like open road in front yeah. of you. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm sure it doesn't always go like this, but yes. I mean it seems like you're fairly fast, <laughs> in the, especially in that car. Yes. And I wanted to ask, uh, you know, what motor is in that car? Look, you, of course, you don't have to give away any secrets or anything, uh, but tell us tell us a little bit about that. Okay, it's an Opel motor, uh, two liter. Um, yeah, it's just a normal. Um, block. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's uh, with nothing, a, with a bit of working on it. Uh, you know what you've learned over the yes, over time. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, so I, I'm assuming that in conjunction with your car's setup, yeah, you know, it makes makes it a lot easier to be faster. Yes. Yeah. No. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now there's something that um, I wanted to ask about. Uh, let's actually have a look at it quickly. Here uh, we can. I reckon we can dispose of this one. And it's something that I noticed. I didn't really see this okay. uh, previously, but uh, where's the... Uh, we won't talk about your gear change right now. Oh, nice. It's on the wrong screen. Um, just bear with us. A little bit of a... A little bit of a mess up there. Okay, there we go. So, uh, without playing the video... Well, we can we can play it in the background. It doesn't matter. This bar here... I've, I mean, it moves around. It looks yes. like it's got a rose joint on the yeah. end. What is that? That's actually the tramp rod. Um, that's the third link. Yeah. Um, a lot of people run them, uh, run long bars now. But I remember growing up, they were always uh, the three links were always short bars. Sure. Okay. Um, but then now that it just over the years got longer and longer. And now it's like, well, if you could have it probably out the front of your bonnet, yeah. it would be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this one runs from all the way from the back of the car all the way to the front. Yes. Um, okay, cool. And and that just helps with with handling and setup of the car. Yes. I imagine. I've actually, um, it's a bit difficult sometimes when it's that long because sometimes the car's a bit tight. Um, okay. So that uh, that chassis now, there is a piece where I can go lower down. And, and um, it, you then you adjust from there. Yeah, so maybe like Cape Town or something, you would go lower. Okay, sure. But like I say, when the track gets hard and dusty, then the car gets very tight. So, but I mean, that's that's definitely Jody's not going to give away secrets. Yeah, this is what you guys have got <laughs> to learn, you know, from years and years of your racing experience you've picked up. Um, yes. So, um, yeah, Jody, another thing I wanted to ask: uh, what's in the silver box? Um, um, that's like a, a medical kit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, that's actually the engine management system. I thought so. Yeah, yeah. some electronics and things yes. like that. Okay. And I mean, you, I take it you keep it up, yeah, or it's, yeah. because it's out of the dirt and it's yeah. generally out of. Everybody's yes. way, and you know, like the rain and um, condensation and stuff. So yes, okay, oh yeah. So th those were two things that I was wondering about. Yeah. Uh, you know that that I'd seen that. Yeah. You know, I wasn't really too sure if it was like a secret, and you didn't <laughs> want to bring it up or yeah. anything. So, but anyway, yeah. Thanks. Uh, you know, thanks for clearing that up. Um, let's just have a look at what else. Yeah, I wanted to. I, I really don't want to miss out on on anything. Uh, it's really special being able to talk to you about this. Thanks. Um, so you, you said you were possibly uh, looking to move over to the V8 or, or the late models at yeah. some stage. And uh, you're going to obviously try your hand at that. But further than that, I believe you may want to race internationally or you've got goals, aspirations. or I do have. Uh, tell us about that. My goal was always to race in America. So Okay. A any specific type of cars? like? Um, um, when I was young, I always wanted to race NASCAR. That was my... My goal throughout sure. the years. Okay. NASCAR was always my favorite category of racing. And is, is that kind of still, you know, a little bit of a, a dream that there you is, maybe want to get there? There is, but I think late models, I th the the reason why I like late models now is because of the late models in America, because it's so big and there's so much competition there at the moment. It's just incredible. Okay. And and is, is that kind of, that's where you wanted to go to? Was there any other forms of racing internationally that you were... Sprint cars is also nice, so those those two things would be very nice to race. Oh, that yes, really, that'll be awesome. Yes. And I mean, is that something? Are you are you trying to work towards that, or is it just like okay, well, maybe one day when I'm 
I am, old and gray. I am trying, <laughs> but I don't want to be too old, like you say. Yeah, that's that's the so. thing. I mean, look, although um, when we were speaking to Gary earlier, he he actually mentioned that like there's some people as old as sixty years old that yeah. are still racing. Yes, of course. I would imagine now you kind of in your prime, you're nice, young, physically fit, yeah. and you've been racing, so you can race um, a physical. A race and a, like a mental a strategic race because yeah. you've got the years behind you yeah um, but it's like Willie he's 78 years old and he's still racing and, and th- those guys are still competitive still competitive and uh, he, and he's his own mechanic when he goes to the track so it's yeah. amazing it, it just makes it um, I, I mean that's great stories to hear yeah. you know um, obviously it does make it a bit easier if you've got people helping you but, yes uh, and, and I'm sure he's probably been racing for the last 40 years or something exactly. 50 years yeah no, that's really, really impressive. Um, I was going to ask, how's the current season going? But of course, we know exactly how that the, how oh. that hasn't been going. Yes. Um, but so far, uh, there's been a couple of races. How is it going so far? Um, what you mean, like with the currency and yeah, like 2020. Like I mean, it's been a, a bit of a failed year. Yeah, but it's, um, 2020. I think it's the worst year with racing. Um, yes. So it uh, hasn't I mean, been easy. The, are you are you still like standing maybe? In, in in place to win the championship, um, I would imagine. I or? think I am leading it. I haven't really looked, but I think I am. Yeah, you yeah. should be up there. Yeah. Okay. And there's still a couple of races this year. I'm actually not sure. I don't even know. I'll, we've just been going to Take the races. Day by day. Yeah. So I remember we raced three races before lockdown, and then we rode another two after lockdown. Yeah. Okay. So this is a th- so this will be the sixth race now this year. Okay. Oh no! Well, I mean, look. At least, at least we're all getting racing in, yes. basically. Yeah. Um, and when it comes down to, uh, you know, getting your racing in and, and maintaining your position, you know, you're in, in the championship or in the classes, that type yeah. of thing. Uh, I'm sure it takes a lot of concentration yeah. and and well, game plan. Yeah. I want to bring up something here on screen quickly, and I want you to tell us about it. Um, I think we can get rid of this video, and let's see here. So here's the question. Oh, yeah, you man. Wrong screen again. But anyway, we'll, we'll get there one day. <laughs> um, this is you getting into your car and you're going to start now putting on your gloves. Uh, helmet, of course. You've got a balaclava, seat belts. There's the steering wheel. I think it's supposed to be on there, not yeah. up on your dashboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what is going through your mind now as, as you're doing what you're doing now, getting in and doing all of this stuff? At the moment, you're just eager to go racing um, because you, you wait so long, especially that day when you wake up of the race day. You you just want to go racing. So you're like excited. Yeah, you excited. Yeah, you okay. just want to get going. And I think that's when accidents happen also because um, everyone's, so, everyone's so eager to get racing. And you kind of just forget about the, the, the formal side of yes, it, like focus. Yeah, something. that's it. And um, are, are you at any stage now, while you're doing this, are you thinking, okay, this guy's in second, this guy's in third, I must take, I've got to be careful here for this thing. Is, is You do you that? do normally think of things like that. Okay. But mainly you know how most of the guys drive. So. Yes. Okay. So, so you've just got to make sure that uh, wherever they are in the, yes. uh, the grid, you yeah. drive appropriately. That's it, yeah. And when you're pulling up now, uh, you, I mean, you started up your car, and you'll see shortly it, you actually drive up into the fake pit area or something. What is that uh, grid? It's you normally they up? call it a dummy grid. Yeah, the dummy grid. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm very new into the whole stock car thing, so I do apologize for that. Um, but the dummy grid, when you're sitting there, and uh, is any different thought process going through, or you're like, just, let's go? Yeah, basically. But you, you know, that's all you're thinking of. You're not thinking of anything else. You're just thinking of the race. And some people used to tell me when I was younger, you must plan your race. I've never been one to really plan a race. Okay. Because I, I think it, it never goes according to plan. You don't never know what the next guy's going to do. Sure. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you, just, you just have to go and see what happens. Okay. And yeah, then, you, then you do what you have to do yeah. accordingly. Okay. Exactly. Um, and so, so the following question to this. Um, now, I've got, some, I've got some footage of it as well. Let's, let's pull it up. But uh, you can start thinking about it so long as... When you, when everybody's bunching up on that, um, on that sighting lap, and generally you're in, in first or second towards the end of the evening, but sometimes obviously names are like pulled out of a hat yes. and you might place place last on the grid. But what is going through your mind, uh, you know, when you're all bunching up and you're just about to put the hammer down? Is there any plan there? Or? Um, not really. Um, you just, uh, you, if I, I take if it you're hoping just to get a good start. Yes. I mean, 
we we and this is this is quite impressive. Uh, let's actually let's just have a, look, a quick watch. Uh, th- this was uh, I think this was um, you know it's now when you start that starting yeah. lap thing, um, but the fact that uh, the speed at which you accelerate from when the green light goes on. I mean, obviously you don't want to miss the green light. Yes. Because, well, th- then you're going to be uh, behind. But um, is there any like specific uh, trick or anything? Or are you just watching for that light and your car performs really well? It, it normally depends where you are on the grid. Sometimes if you're uh, near the back, you battle to see the light. Sure, okay. Um, but you, you normally try and keep your eye on the light as, as much as you can. Is it? And, and I take it when you're at the back of the grid, um, it's not like you, you can't, you don't have free reign to accelerate. You yeah. can't accelerate into the right exactly. in front of you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but when you're in front, uh, does it matter to you if you're on the, uh, the inside or the outside, or are you, are you taking into consideration like the, the track surface and holding yeah. back a bit? Or tell us about that. Yeah, you normally want to keep all the guys bunched up um, before you before you start. Um, so yeah, you um, keep them bunched up, and then when you come around, then you just focused on the on the light, sure. but I, I like to always start. It's always nice to start second if you up in the front. It's not nice to start first because really? then all the pressures on you. Okay, I don't like it. Yes, yes, yes. The point. Yeah. So this was just an external view. So obviously, what position is that now? Third. Third. Okay. Um, but this was quite interesting. Where I mentioned check here, and all of a sudden there, you flip a hammer yeah. down, and you're ahead, and you just stay ahead. <laughs> so this is what I was mentioning. I mean, this is what we see from your GoPro. Yeah. Just uh, nothing. <laughs> just you, you on a Sunday drive going around the track. Um, okay, no, well, I suppose, and, and this the speed of pulling away that comes down to car power yeah. setup. You know your track conditions yes. from all of your experience. Uh, well, that was definitely something I wanted to ask about. Uh, what else do we have here in... Uh, uh, this gear change thing. So this is something that uh, we did mention in a previous episode, which you probably saw. Yeah. And uh, I didn't actually notice it. And Rudy is like, "Hey, what's that guy doing there?" You know? Yeah. Um, so let's let's see if we can if we can pull it up here. But uh, tell us about now when you're going around the track. Do you stay in one gear? Is that uh, normally stay in one gear? Um, I'm normally riding second gear. Okay. Depending what what diff ratio you're putting. So do you generally change the diff ratio and not the gearbox? Yeah, um, I change, the yes, I change the diff ratio. Okay. But what I was doing there was actually changing to third gear. Oh, okay. So have you got a sequential box in here? No, just no, a just normal, normal H box. pattern. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's that's there we go. You so you change to third. Yeah. And what is the reason for that? Okay, so normally what, what I do is if if I'm if I go out if I'm in front and I see that I've pulled quite a gap, there's no use revving the car in second gear. Sure, okay. So that's why I just go to third and then coast the car. Um, well, lower revs, basically. basically. Yeah. And uh, it's got enough power to yes. sit in that lower le- rev bracket. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I was really, I was really wondering about that. I was like, yeah. Oh, man, I'm sure it's the key. One gear. Yes. Um, okay. No, well, wonderful. Thanks for clearing that up. I was. Th- these were some of the things where, where I was going to ask you, and I thought, mm, I wonder if this is a touchy thing. Maybe you don't want this brought up. And yeah. But um, I yeah, actually, I actually didn't want it. To, I actually forgot forgot the camera was in the car i wasn't gonna change but okay. it happens so <laughs> yeah it doesn't really matter well <laughs> it's actually a good thing that when you forget the camera and the, yes. the, it's there because then everything ha- happens naturally naturally yeah, yeah. so uh so yeah you, you've done definitely a lot of racing um uh, with your current car and uh, i mean you've told us about wh- eventually where you want to go to um you mentioned earlier that you were going back to east london uh, tomorrow but you're not racing no, in I'm that not race racing. okay um, it's also with a diff ratio. I'm not, I, th- I don't know what time they're starting. Probably like 11, 12 o'clock tomorrow. So, so uh, is that not enough time? I mean, it's obviously a lot of work. Eh? Tell it's us about a lot of work because um, basically with my car, I like to take the whole diff out. Then I take the center portion out and then you also have to shim it up and stuff. Okay. So the it's not really a big job changing it, but it's the shimming part of it. And that must be right. I mean, that's why your yeah. car is so... Um, you know, it doesn't break, you know what I mean? You're yeah. not trying to do anything quick yes. on the slide type thing. Yeah, because okay. you also don't want it to be too tight there also or too loose. I mean, if it's too loose, you've got too much play there. Yes. Okay. So you try and shimmer it up properly. And how, 
uh, reliable is your car as far as, uh, I mean, you do a lot of preventative maintenance, but as far as the, the engine and the chassis that you've been running, um, has that been really reliable? It has been very, very re- uh, reliable. And the, the, it's a space, what do they call it, a flexi frame or space frame? Um, like a pipe frame, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. I just call it a normal chassis, but a lot of people call it a space frame and that. Okay. And the, um, so I just want to get this, is looking a bit crappy there. Um, your body is a fiberglass body. Yeah. It, it takes a beating at some time. Yes. Do you have spare bodies or how does that work? Do you repair them? Um, or? We just, I just got a mold of the front end. So if we get a knock somewhere else, you just have to fix it. Sure. So there's and, no way. And that you all do in-house? Uh, yes. You basically I, do everything I, I've in-house. got a guy that helps me with the body works. Okay. Yeah, he's very good. He does the um, fiberglass painting, everything. Oh, very nice. Okay. Yes. Um, and I'm just checking uh, to make sure that we don't uh, miss out on anything here. So this part of, the, you know, everything's done in-house um, uh, in your own workshop with all your own stuff, which I, I take it it makes it a little bit more affordable to be in a front runner, of course, it takes a bit of um, a bit of money. I mean, yeah. everybody knows that. If you want to be competitive, we need to put in. But I mean, have you found that helps you guys out a bit because now you can control all the parts of the process, all the parts of your maintenance, your performance setup, um, and it makes it a little bit more uh, easier to uh, palatable. You know what I mean? Rather than paying other people to do yeah. it. Yeah. In the beginning, I had a lot of people helping me, show me on the right path and that. But I like I like to do most of the stuff in-house now, like you say. There's still a lot of things you can't really do, like probably like um, send the head in for engineering or something like that. But most of the stuff I like to do in-house. Yes. And I take it you've got guys that, uh, that you, there's certain people that you trust with yes. your stuff. Yeah. Okay. And do you ever dino these cars? Or is it I, not like a thing? It's, like? I've donated them once or twice, okay. but not... Um, that's not really a thing. Not for a stock car? Not for a stock car because... You, a lot of people say they make this much power and that, but it, I think the track is where it does. That's what matters, yeah. That's what matters. Okay. So. And then um, as part of the last part of that question, when you are completing your lap and when you get onto the last lap, when you see the white flag, what is? Oh, well, we kind of touched on it already, but what is going through your mind then? Let's say this is like the last race of the season, this is for the win type thing. Tell then, us about that. Okay, well, if it's a last race of the season and – um, you want to win the championship. It's kind of a relief, and obviously, especially when you win, you obviously feel good and stuff like that. Yes. So you obviously, but most races, I like to, especially um, sometimes a race just goes by so quickly because you're having so much fun. Yes. And then you're like, oh, the race is finished. It's over. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just want to carry on racing. Okay. And so. I, I believe that um, that last lap is. There's, there's quite a great chance of you being over, not you being overtaken, but the first, the front runner being overtaken by the second person because they kind of lapse in judgment a little yeah. bit. So is that is that a point on that last lap when you are really concentrating about obviously not spinning out or how, you know how does that work? It, it has happened to me before. I think more than one, or once or twice Re- that, you, that you've been overtaken. Overtaken on the last lap, on the last lap because oh, you yeah. like think like you say you don't you don't want to make a mistake on the last lap. Yes. So you a bit more cautious and then. You get passed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah, man, that's, that's quite interesting to hear. And are there any, like, st- not stories, but may- or maybe stories or any, like, um, uh, points in your racing career that you, you found really interesting and like, oh, I didn't know this or, or this was like a nice little story that I wanted to share or to promote yourself as a driver? Anything that springs to mind? Um, Nothing that I can think of at the moment. Yeah, it's kind of difficult when you but put on the spot. Yes. Um, Where does your race number come from, this E333? I've always liked the number number three. Okay. Um, when I came back to oval racing in 2014, I was number 33. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> and um, then I've, and there's a lot of people with triple numbers. Yes. So I thought, well, let me, and I couldn't be number three because number three is reserved for SA3. Mm. So I thought, well, let me just try triple. Triple three out because in Australia they got the triple eight car that okay. looked quite nice, um, and then I saw Enrique's was triple five, Tasha's Van Tonda. There were a lot of people with triple numbers. Yes, um, so I just thought triple three might be interesting. Okay. But my f- my favorite number, what I would like to race with, is twenty four. I always liked the number twenty four. And is so. that, has that been taken by somebody else or? Um, 
I think Perry Kotze is 24 in my class. Okay. So, so if late, you move to another class, then maybe you could... Yeah, maybe up. with a late model. I think with a late model, I think 24 would be... <laughs> hopefully. Uh, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I've also noticed, of, I mean, if somebody doesn't notice that your car is yellow, <laughs> mostly yeah. yellow, and yeah. it's got, um, it's border towing and recovery. Yes. Uh, are they your sponsor? Is this your business? What? Um, it's my father's business, okay. but he's obviously been supporting me since I started racing. So, so Border uh, Towing is, is your main sponsor. Main sponsor. Do you have any other sponsors that help you out? Um, not really at the moment. Um, there is a guy that wants to help me now, um, Gary Schroeder from Puff Scrap. Okay. Um, he wants to sponsor me. When I rode V8s, I had a sponsor there also, Drift Performance Products. Okay. Anything that we needed, he would sponsor for. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. That yeah. was very nice. No, nice man. Um, so yeah, thank well, thank you then to your dad's business and yeah. to your obviously your family for supporting you yes. in all of that. Um, yeah, so so you are racing in this afternoon's race uh, that's coming up now in, in about two hours time. Yeah. Um, I, I said I wanted to mention your setup because last time when I saw you, um, it, it's like you're not under pressure really. You come there, you offload your car, and you've got your whole. I mean, obviously you got your tools and everything, but you're never working on it. Um, <laughs> What have you learned over the years of, um, you know, going there and the, the current, like the current setup that you're using as far as your towing vehicle, and you've got quite a nice, comfortable, you know, seating arrangement in yeah. the back there. Do you prefer that type of thing? Yes, I do. Um, basically, I like to do the work before I get to the track. Okay. It's not always nice to work on the car and then then you're late for heat or something. Sure. Okay. So. Um, and and I mean the, the, your, your current setup now with it's a sprinter, right? Sprinter, it's, yeah. Yes. And th does that tow the car fine? Yes. Fine. Um, we've had that van since 2011, so it's been that that van's been all over the country. Yes. And with uh, V8s, you, drifting, everything. Oh, nice. Okay. So and it's yeah. a fairly comfortable setup with very the, comfortable uh, for it's, traveling. It's and, got and bus sitting. bus seats at the back, okay. so that's very comfortable. Oh, nice. And the back of it, maybe at some stage you can walk us through. Uh, not well. Maybe we can have a quick look at your sprinter, but yeah. I'd like to at some stage come down, and if you are willing, walk us through your workshop, talk us okay. through your car, and and various bits and pieces. Yeah, you know, no Think problem. about it. You don't have to give us an answer yeah. now. <laughs> think about what you need to like keep secret there. I yeah. don't really have any secrets. Um, You're just so. damn fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's that's great. It's actually been it's actually been wonderful chatting to you. Thank um, you. I don't want to go too much longer because I don't want to make you late for the races. I mean, there's yeah. a certain time. Obviously, you got to be yes. there and, and you got to go prep. Um, so thanks very much for joining us. Um, Thank you. Any other sponsors that you want to mention that you want to actually thank or other than the ones that you've mentioned? Mainly just my dad. Um, like I say, he's been helping me, supported me throughout my career. And then also everyone that's that helps me at the track and um, getting the car ready and stuff. Sure. Okay. Um, well, that's, that's great. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And for all of you know, you know, there's actually a lot of people that watch racing and they don't understand how much goes on in the background. So really thanks, guys, for all of that help for all of the drivers. Um and all of the people behind the drivers. Uh, we want to have a little bit of fun here quickly, and you've seen the show already. We ask three standard questions to everybody. First thing that pops into your mind, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, who's the best driver? That's a difficult question because a lot of names come in my mind. Just, um, you know, like Marco Schumacher, yes, Eton yes. Senna, that type of thing. Like even rally drivers come in my mind, like Walter Roll. Sebastian Loeb. This is quite but interesting because I, I asked that question to Gary and he said the exact same people. Is it? <laughs> I, always, yeah. I always assume that everybody's going to say like stock car racing drivers or something like that. Um, <laughs> no, that's it. I mean, that's what I thought. Well, uh, oh, interesting just well, to see. The thing is, uh, what I've seen over this year now, mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll, I'll choose a driver, um, but I, I'm going to go with Carl Larson because he was racing. I don't know if you know Carl Larson. Not at all, no. He used to race NASCAR. And very good NASCAR driver. Yes. And when he's not doing NASCAR, he's doing dirt track racing, racing sprint cars. So <laughs> that guy oh, doesn't nice. stop racing. So, so he's, he's not up and coming, but I mean, he's up and coming and he's he's up there, should we yes. say. Yeah. So um, anyway, then something happened. Now he's, he lost his drive in NASCAR. Okay. Um, and so he went back to dirt over racing yes. and he's been winning everything he raced in. Oh, nice. So he, he uh, won in sprint cars, the USAC midgets. And then he tried out the late model. Yes. against the top oaks in the country and he beat them. 
Jeez. No, so, impressive. Okay, so uh, there we go. Your number one driver <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for now at least. Yes. Um, next question. I think I know what the answer is going to be here, but Toyota or Ford? Oh, <laughs> that's a difficult <laughs> question because I would say Ford for, for racing, but definitely Toyota um, for the road. Because yeah, <laughs> that's okay. very reliable. This is what, this is what I thought you were going to say is, is Ford, yeah, yeah, because of the racing. Thing. Yes, and then um, the last last out of three questions: rear wheel drive or front wheel drive? Rear wheel drive. <laughs> wow, I've never actually raced a front wheel drive or driven many front wheel drives. I've I've tested a front wheel drive once. Okay, <laughs> and that didn't go well. So so definitely, I mean, rear wheel drive is like is what a lot of us yes. have a lot of fun in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, well, that's wonderful. Um, uh, it's Jody. It's been wonderful talking to you today, and hopefully, like I say, we can we can uh, get into your workshop at some stage. You can come onto the show again. Okay. And just good luck with the rest of the season. It's coming Thank to you. a close, and then good luck with um, you know, your future endeavors. Um, I really want to. It's going to be awesome to see you in a late model. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, that is going to be great. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just want to say also thank you to all of our viewers for watching and. Uh, you know, Jody, any any last words that you want to say to our viewers? Or? Um, nothing really at the moment. No, um, uh, well, just it, thanks for watching. I suppose. Thanks for watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, so guys and and girls, give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave us some comments. Let us know what you guys think of uh, Jody's racing and his aspirations. And um, you, you know, maybe you've been following him for years and years already. We actually had somebody on. I think it was Vicky's video. They actually asked, uh, when are you going to interview Jody? I was like, okay, oh, okay, okay. This is, <laughs> there's interested people. <laughs> okay. So let us know what you guys think in the comments on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. And go go follow Jody as, as a, I mean, I'm sure you've got Instagram and, and Facebook accounts as a, as a driver, man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah go you. follow that. Thank um, you. Yeah. Guys, I, I suppose that is it for this episode. Um, Let's get to racing. Let's get to the track and let's go capture some. Let's go have some good racing on your side. Good fun. Good yeah. racing. Definitely. Um, Jody, thanks very much and we'll chat to you again Thank soon. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers. We'll see you again. <laughs>